If you, I'm assuming everyone out there has seen this match. If you haven't, before you do a watch along with us, watch it with the sound because this is one of the great examples of a crowd really making a match because the crowd is exceptional in their reactions yeah. to everything here. And I think uh, with that prefacing, we can start going through some of these things as we see them. Well, for those of you on the WWE Network, you want to go to WrestleMania 18 under the WWE Pay-Per-View tab. Two hours, 29 minutes, and five seconds into WrestleMania 18. Of course, there is an option to jump to the specific segment under the video player. The segment is Hollywood Hulk Hogan versus The Rock. But once again, two hours, 29 minutes, and five seconds into WrestleMania 18. Jim, are you ready? I am standing by, oh great one. I'm going to count down from five and then say, press play now. <laughs> when I say now, press play. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. I don't know who I'm saying it to. You were the audience, but either way. Five, four, three, two, one. Press play now. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And I got to be honest, the, the the NWO black and white strobe light entrance effect and the, the treatment and everything, it got old when they were just doing it constantly on the WCW show in the 90s, right? Just all the time. But this, after you haven't seen it for fucking however long, it was a nice little homage, throwback or whatever to the to the WCW days. Surprise, Vince paid for the licensing to the Hendrix song? Um, not because it was Hogan. You know, he's proven CM Punk got his uh, living color done in his contract. And for Hogan, for something like this, I'm not surprised. But he, he won't set the precedent to do it for just every Tom's dick is hairy. But anyway, if, if we had the audio up now, you'd be hearing Hogan knows at this point he's got him right where he wants him. Because everything worked out in his favor. The nostalgia effect. He's in his best town. Nine years being off WrestleMania. It's the perfect way to come back. And you can tell by what they they did at the finish, or after the finish, that it was always going to be their plan for Hogan to be a babyface going forward. But they had to tie up this loose end. But the, the people just jumped ahead of him. I wonder what Vince could have done with a heel Hogan. Because he turned them pretty quickly after the NWO got there. I I don't think he liked the whole idea. I think it's like... Uh, Hogan had to be a heel in WCW. That really kicked the whole NWO thing off, and it was surprising. It was a new coat of paint and a new fresh look for a guy that had... Because when Hogan left in 93, he left Vince, he wasn't drawn anymore. Elsewise, Vince wouldn't let him go. Because it was over. It, it was It was... They'd seen too much. How can I miss you if you won't go away? So he reinvented himself in WCW. And, you know, but Hogan, Vince was never going to let Hulk Hogan any spend any length of time as a heel in his company. That was his creation, and he didn't see that that way. And, and he was right, because once he comes back to the same place, nostalgia kicks in. And they want to see him again. But then they were smart. They didn't have to see him every fucking week. And there he is selling the crowd reaction right away. Yeah. Well, you can tell they both they both get it. And they both see what's going on. And then when Rock comes out, instead of a mixed reaction at first, it's entirely booze. It's just cacophonic. The cacophony of booze. And here he comes. And you'll you'll see it on his face here in a minute, I think. Is like he realizes, okay, yeah, <laughs> all right, this is going to be a little, a little different. <clears throat> but see, you can't shake him, and at that time, you understand Hogan's going to go with whatever, and it's going to be hard to shake him. But Rock in two thousand and two, remember he'd been big for four or five years, but he didn't have that level of experience, and he's just starting to get in the movies and. He's going to be gone pretty soon. They thought he was going to be the future. He didn't last that long. He he got too big too quick. But we, right, yeah, right there in his face, when he hears that, he's like, okay, I see what's going on. <laughs> I 
Imagine if it had been Austin. Um, What would the reaction have been if it had been Hogan and Austin here? If it would have been Austin, they would have cheered Austin more than Rock because I just, well, they'd done the heel thing the previous year, but if just classic Steve Austin, he would have got more cheers than The Rock because they wouldn't want to have booed him quite as much, I don't think, because it was Austin. But I think, honestly, this match probably would have been better than Hogan and Austin. Because I think Rock knows in the back of his mind also, he's got Hollywood, no pun intended, with the fucking do-rag. He's got Hollywood already calling. Austin would have would have probably wanted to uh, have continued on had he been able to, healthy. So, and look, now they're, just, they're looking around and they're milking it. Anyway, I think this is a better match because the participants than Hogan and Austin would have been because they would have been more concerned about how they were coming out at the other side, each of them. And now watch this. You can tell that this they didn't intend, at, at least to be this long. They might have said, yeah, we'll do the eye to eye, brother. But they're just they're just taking their time. And both of them know that because of the camera work, that's where Vince's crew excels. They're going to get these facials. You see that and Hogan sign there? That was the same one at WrestleMania 6 in the Sky Dome. Yeah. And, so, and now you can just, they're, they know that they've got them. They know, both these guys know right now that regardless of what they do, they've got them and they're going to enjoy this. I mean, the guy, the Hogan and Rock are going to enjoy this because they know, they probably, you can almost see goof bump, goose, goof bumps, goose bumps. They've got them and that's why they milked that. And that's why they said, we're not going to rush this thing. They were probably whispering to it. Hogan was probably to milk it, brother. And watch this, this simple thing. At the start, Hogan's the bigger guy, right? He's bigger. He's a little stronger. But you wouldn't expect the baby face to get pushed ass over tea kettle like that. And that facial expression. See, they could have called that in the back. Hogan's stronger, so he's going to shove you off, Rock. But it didn't say Rock take a bump ass over tea kettle and come up with that shocked look. That's what he did because of the people. And now Hogan doing Rock's just bring it thing. They could do these same moves, holds, maneuvers, whatever the instances, things they're going to do. They could do these things. And, but it's the way that they react to each other doing them and sell them and the facial expressions and the body language that determines who the crowd gets behind in any match. So when they've already got these people hooked like this, boom, and the place goes crazy because when did Rock take bumps like that for heels when he was a baby face? Never. Yeah. But he knows now. So he's, they're doing the heel versus baby face match that they've got planned, but they're switching roles in reaction and in execution. And it still works because there's nothing here. As you'll see that the rock or Hulk Hogan do do that's unnatural for them to do. And the people go, what the fuck? It's the little things that you didn't notice until I just asked you. Right. Well, I noticed that Rock was selling that more like he would as a heel than as a baby face. Well, yeah, but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't stand out. Look at that, the gut shot, boom, and look at him selling there now. It wouldn't stand out, is what I'm saying. You wouldn't just go, well, look at that. And especially the people in the Sky Dome now, but it's, I, look at that. Just Hogan is the Hogan that they want to see right at this point. And boom, and the close, and look at the flippy floppy. But he's not... He's not begging. The Rock is not begging, don't do this to me, like a full-fledged heel would, because The Rock wouldn't beg. And in here we go with the, yeah, the duck, and boom. And the people are bullshit. The people are booing. And fuck it now, Rock, he does the bring it all the time, but not with that. In And now look at Hogan stumbling over, and oh my gosh, and now Hogan's got the bullshit look like, holy crap. Now, Hogan is like this young kid, this arrogant, brash, obnoxious kid may indeed have my number. I got a fucking cinch up here. They're just, they're playing with the people's emotions and they're doing very little of anything. 
if, in case you haven't noticed. It's tearing the house down. And look at Mike Kyoto. Boy, he was thinner back then than he is the last time I saw him. And I, I give Hogan credit for that. He was going to try it, but he couldn't get over it. <laughs> but with his back, even at that point, right? At this point, WWE getting along with the magazines. That's why you see so many photographers yeah. at ringside. And now look, now Rock is going after the guy that was pissing him off earlier. It looks like a heel stalk and a baby face that's selling. But at the same time, it's nothing out of character. And now look, now look at Hulk. He's disoriented and he's staggered. He looks like Ricky Morton now because now it's the Rock's turn to show what he can do. And boom. And I always say, oh, this always sucks when there's no clearly defined baby face or heel. Well, there couldn't be a more clearly defined baby face or heel in this thing right now, according to the people. Even if it's not the ones that they originally intended, but they're not doing anything that, that doesn't make sense for each of them and for this as a, as a whole. And boy, you know, there's a whole, there's a big difference in Hulk Hogan at 45 than 65, isn't there? Oh yeah. He's still in great yeah. shape here. I mean, you can tell hey. his back is hurting him, but he's in great shape. And the, the old uh, elbows that he used to do in Japan and then the boom, and that's a heel move. But it, he does it like the baby face giving the heel back what he deserves after doing something to him. That's the attitude at the same time. Nobody's grabbing anybody's dick and twisting here. They're not that fucking heelish. Now, boom, this one, I believe coming up next as I watched this a little while ago, there's a little, a little flub here coming up, but they cover it. I think this is the one going into the corner. Boom. And Rock should have come out and speared him, but he didn't. So Hogan says, okay, I'll get nasty. He's covering up something because you're going to see they're going to go to this a different way here in a second. This was what was supposed to happen out of the corner. Boom. See? But nobody knows that. And look at those punches. And look at Hogan. <laughs> he was nowhere near him. <laughs> he was punching his neck. <laughs> he was punching his neck. We got to call it. We call the other guys. And there was this up and over swing. But the thing is, no, it's like Steve Austin stomping a mud hole in somebody and somebody his foot doesn't touch. They're so over the people don't see it. Two schlubs can't get away with this shit. And now technically, you know, this is the part where Hogan's getting a little fucking steam on fucking rock as a heel. But the people are, but it still works either way. It's a that fucking loosey goosey abdominal stretch. It's not even really a fucking hold, but they're not they're not noticing. I mean, look at Rock's face. Rock's selling it perfectly. You yeah. know, it's looks like shit. And a little roll up there just for Hogan to show that he can still do these things. And you're right again, the crowd and the atmosphere is so incredible that it's making this and rock pulls himself up by the fucking ropes and Hogan doing the back rake and, and look at Rocky selling now, like he's fucking Riggy Morton fans, and, and fans popping for a back rake. Yeah. And the good thing is also, as we'll see by the end of this, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but at the end of it, all is right with the world even before the fucking NWO gets involved in the turn we talked about because after the people have seen what they came to see and cheered Hulk Hogan like they came to cheer him, they still cheer for the finish because it was the right thing to do. And they cheered when fucking Hogan started. He started doing the punches, the 10 punches, and they started counting, so he stopped after three and just bit him. And now, and now look at Rock's baby face fire. They're, they went with the people, but now in this stage, they're, they're on such a better level than everybody else. They're starting to go back to where now that the people are getting it out of their system, Rocky can fight from underneath and the people start getting behind him. Because now it's starting to get a little more even. And that's the laziest choke I've ever seen, but once again, <laughs> it works. 
And now, look, here we go. It's a heel tactic. Take your fucking wrist tape off and choke the baby face. But the people cheered it. But Hogan's still doing the heel things that he knows he needs to do because at the end of this, you want the people... He wants the people thinking Rocky's the underdog and when he gets the victory, wow. But he also wants people to think that Rocky's the underdog because he's still playing his own games. Now look at Rocky fighting from underneath. Now the people halfway want to start getting behind this fucking kid. Oh, that shit can't him. Let's take the baby face momentum out from under him. And that way Hogan could just stand there and sweep his arm and Rocky could take the fucking athletic bump. And it, over a period of time, when you, it, it, the people are going to get behind Rocky to some extent because he's the under underdog now, but also Hogan wanted that for the match, but also Hogan always wanted to, and you'll see something key later on. Hogan still wants to keep his status of I'm the big star. This is the new star. So he's doing that for himself in this match while he's doing the shit for, for Rock at the same time. I still don't know why they take all the fucking sharp pointed stuff off the table if they want to hurt their opponent, but nevertheless. Boom, boom, boom. Now Rocky gets to make a little comeback and foil the fucking heel shit that Hogan was going to do to him with whatever the table business was going to be. Watch this. Shows to the people the chair in the building, picks it up and puts it right in the place for Kyoto to grab it. He's right there and boom. Great timing. You didn't see it coming, but everybody was right where it was supposed to be and everything that's supposed to happen, happened. In those big buildings, especially in the stadiums, you have to make the, the wider motions. You have to pick the chair up so they see you've got it or you have to get the gimmick up the top of your hand or top of your arm, so then hold your arm up so they see you have it. Anyway, boom, back in the ring. And what a perfect referee bump. I think they're going to replay it. Kyoto was coming in. Rock was fucking charging full st steam. Once again, all Hogan has to do is fucking sidestep, but the timing on it was perfect. You didn't see it coming until it happened. That's what gets a pop. Oh, <gasps> shit. I didn't see that coming. Here's the replay. Watch this timing. Boom. And now here we go again. There's no referee. Something's going to happen, the people think. But what? Both guys down. Hulk checking his hairdo. And as Hogan gets to it, look at the people start coming up just because Hogan's getting to his feet first. And a nice trip so as not to, to hurt the gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> and now Bret Hart's move in Toronto. The sharpshooter on their iconic hero. There's no referee. Is he going to be able to power out? Doesn't look like it. Oh, my God. Can he get the ropes? Yes, he can, but there's no referee. So, Brock, take advantage. <laughs> and now look, the tap. There's no referee, Hogan, and it, this this works also here again in a minute. It's tit for tat, but Hogan knows now he's the fucking he's 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 given the Rock something, and nobody can say that he wasn't putting Rock over, but he still didn't lose right there, and he's never tapped out in his life, right? Officially, Rocky hears the fucking call of the wild here, and boom. And now Hogan has done his thing and used rocks, rock bottom. And the people got to think this is it. One, two, they're ready for it. No, holy shit. What a false finish. You can, Pat Patterson is all over this thing. This is what Pat Patterson would bring to the, to the party. He would know what things to do at just the right time, especially on false finishes and ways to construct this thing going home. He learned it from Roy Shire, from Eddie Graham, all of whatever the fuck. And you can tell Pat's all over this. And now look, now even the people are cheering like crazy, but Hogan's still acting like a heel with heel mannerisms. 
on the belt whipping. And boom, and the miss on this. Watch the different way that fucking Rocky uses the belt. You'll find it in a minute. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's like, aha. See, the baby face would see it and pick it up, but now the people are kind of booing. But he's like, I got the chance that he goes to fucking town on poor old Hulk Hogan. And the same thing Rock did. He'd take a whip and he'd put himself back in the right place. Fucking Hogan takes a shot and puts himself back in the right place. And Rocky, this is a baby face comeback with a belt, but it's got heel animosity in it. And then he spit on it. I guarantee you the spit was an audible. And now the people think, oh, the shit, that low rock bottom, still because of his back, people think this is it. Fuck, they've done it. No, holy shit. He's going to hulk up. Now they're Lawler. jumping. Yeah, they're jumping up and down. Lawler even asked uh, JR, you think he's going to hulk up now? <laughs> this is professional wrestling. They have manipulated these people's emotions with what they've done in front of them and who the, the people think they are to the point where these people are throwing their babies for basic shit. The big boot. Look at the people. The big leg drop. They know this is it. One, two, holy shit. And a Hogan's like, what the fuck? Now look. Now he's now the worm is starting to turn a little bit because it's like, what have I got to do? And the people are like, shit, this is a great fucking match. Rock is getting over with these people that didn't want to like him going in. And boom, the second big boot. Now this has got to be it, but no. How often does he miss that leg? Not often. He missed it against the Warrior. The same building. There you go. Now, boom. Another rock bottom. And look at the faces and look at the selling. And Rocky's like, uh uh uh. Because he's still got a few tricks up his sleeve. I have a feeling he was probably really trying to pull him up. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got to give him another one. And the pit, but now look at that boom up like that. And here we go. And now the people's up. Now they stand up. Okay. Now we know we're going some way or another. Somebody's going to win this soon. And it's the people's elbow and we want to see it. And Rocky gets a big pop and the people fucking cheer one, two, three. And that was it. I wish you would have won with the rock bottom instead of the people's elbow. But you, here's the thing. What got the people to cheer the rock overwhelmingly for the first time in that match? The people's elbow. Yeah, you're right about that. That's what they wanted to see because it was as seen on TV, as Rip Rogers always said. They wanted to see it because it was seen on, they'd seen the leg drop. They'd seen the leg drop miss. They'd seen the guys change rock bottoms. They'd seen all these twists and turns. It had to be the people's elbow. And as a matter of fact, I bet Hogan probably insisted on it because even though it was the most ludicrous, lackluster fucking real move, it was the move that was most over. Not because it looked phony or because it was silly, but because the, most over personality in the company decided to use it. And that's what got it over. If it'd been some fucking schlub doing it in the opening match, people would have fucking thrown feces at him. But anyway, now look, when's the last time you saw Hogan sell like that? That long. He's dead. Cause he's smart. Now that rocks getting his glory and he got cheered and the torch has been passed. Now Hogan wants to keep all the attention on himself. He knows the little the post match is coming up, but look at him crawling. He's suddenly he's not a heel anymore. Look at now he's an old man facially. Now he's feeble physically on purpose. Look at him trying to pull himself to his feet. Because even though Rock's getting all the glory, 
in a minute, the post match is going to switch the attention, and then Hogan's going to have all the attention on him again. And look, and look at this now. He can't stand up straight. He's holding his ribs. Look at the look. Look at the face. He's not Hollywood Hulk Hogan now. He's the he's Babe Ruth. He's he's fucking Lou Gehrig giving his fucking speech in Yankee Stadium. Look at and he's offering the hand. What a nice guy. And the rock is that prick the rock going to accept it? This is Marcel Marceau. This is pantomime at its finest. This is playing with people's emotions. And the place blows because now they're together. Hogan has done it. He's been gracious in victory. And look at, look at how here you have the ropes. You have the stage. You have, you exit. I'm just a beaten old man. <laughs> he's playing these people like a fucking fiddle. Have another curtain call, Rock. It's all about you. He's keeping all the attention on himself by telling the people, yeah, I'm giving, I'm giving this guy my thumbs up. He must be something if I say he is, and if he beat me, all the attention's on Hogan. And then the Rock has time to, there's Jimmy Suzuki. Jimmy Suzuki, as a ringside photographer, has gotten more juice than any other ringside photographer, as our earlier talk about photographers. Look at, look at that Hogan. What a great guy he is, right? What a great guy he is. The Rock. He, I'm clapping for him. Here's his fucking friends that aren't such nice guys. Hall and Nash. What the fuck is this handshake business? You fucking stooge. Here's my toothpick and fuck you. Right? And now why? And Hogan immediately, he sells more than John Moxley sells of being run over by a car from two punches and a kick. <laughs> because he knows. And now look. They're just going to kick the shit out of him. Fuck this fucking Hulk Hogan. The people are like, oh my God, poor Hulk. He's in jeopardy. And here comes the rock. Boom, boom. Hall didn't want to fucking feed him. Hall wanted to get beat up by Hogan. And Nash with the over the top rope bump. And Hogan, look, Hogan's back up and, and Hall's bumping for him like a fucking ping pong ball. And over the top rope, he goes shit can to the floor. And now here they are again in the ring together. All is right with the world. Everybody's in the right place. In 30 minutes, they went out there and had not only the show-stealing match, but also started with The Rock, supposed to be the baby face, but the, the overwhelming heel. Hogan's supposed to be the heel, but because of the nostalgia factor, the overwhelming baby face, they worked a match where they switched positions in the match to get everybody in the right place where the people finally cheered the rock, who was the ultimate baby face beating Hulk Hogan. Then Hogan switched baby face by aging 15 years physically in front of our very eyes and becoming the feeble figure of sympathy that rock had to save. This is a goddamn masterpiece. And once again, if you had that match with anybody else, psychologically the work was everything they did was impeccable but the actual work and the moves wasn't anything that anybody couldn't have fucking done and probably done better but nobody would have give a shit if it was anybody else but these two guys and did you see the way that the facials and the body language changed the people's reactions from what they might have been to what they were and then what they wanted them to be and now look now rock is smart enough Hogan's trying to leave the stage to rock, but rock's like, no motherfucker. They want to see you pose. So the rock now is the people are cheering. Yeah. Hulk, give a, give the rock what he wants. Come in here and pose. We all want to see it. This is shameless hammery and it works. Those two big fucking industrial sized canned hams are milking these people for every drop of milk they've got. And then there we go. And that's what they want. The Rock got his celebration. But then Rock gives Hogan his. It's dueling baby facery at the end. Where's Vladimir? <laughs> hey, look at how happy the fans are. That I means perfect. And now, did you see that for just a second? The Rock came up like, I may even fucking glom this guy, but he just wanted to hear it easier. He just wanted to hear it better but he had the look on his face. 
And Hogan still, he, I have to admit also, he got himself in wonderful fucking condition for this. And a little more hot doggery. And it, this is what this was. And, you know, in the 80s, this is why that I was not a WWF fan because it was all the posing and the show and the cheer and whatever. And we considered our program in the NWA, you know, more of what wrestling was. And we were both right. They had the fucking sizzle. We had the stake. You need both. Eventually, modern day WWE started to give people both, like on shows like this where you had great matches, but you also had these performances rather than just fucking get it over as quick as possible as from the 80s. And Hogan's nostalgia was able to, to, to last for this because of how over he was. But he's smart motherfucker. And there you and both of them walking up the fucking aisle. That's the shot you want. Of course, Hogan makes sure that he's bigger in the camera. <laughs> it, it, this was pro. This was a five star match. If anybody in the world thinks that in the auspices of professional wrestling that the street fight in the parking lot between the Best Friends and Santana and Ortiz was a better piece of professional wrestling business than this. I think you're absolutely out of your fucking rabbit ass mind. Well, that's where this it started was the idea that this, it was even before the parking lot match, the idea that this wasn't the five star match, that this somehow only got, I forget if it was three stars or what it was, but that this wasn't the five star match. Well, and there's been so many of, of the of examples, not so many examples like this. This was a special time and a special place, but there's a there's a lot of great matches that if you just analyzed it or had anybody else do the match, it wouldn't have been worth shit. But because of the time and the place and the people involved, it was fucking great. This was a piece of work for the time and the place and also for the psychology involved and for the thinking, whether it be the finish or just the guy's reactions on their feet. The wrestling wasn't anything special. But the result was a fucking grand spectacle, and it was perfect pro wrestling. If anything's five stars in wrestling, this would be it. Just because you went out and bashed yourself with a bunch of blunt instruments and really hurt yourself for no people in the building and a lackluster less than a million people watching on television and a comedy ending amongst people that weren't over in a match that was not only not anticipated, but won't be remembered next month. That's not five stars. That's a lot of that's stupid. <laughs> they gave a great effort as we mentioned, and then shit all over it at the end when they had the fucking mascot come out of the trunk and it all turned into comedy with his, their mother driving them off to fucking soccer practice or whatever. But this was big time business with big time players. And that's why they got there. And that's why that Hogan is one of the biggest box office attractions in the history of the business, along with Londos and fucking Longson. And the rock is the biggest movie star in Hollywood. And the other guys are on TNT cable, you know, pissing a billionaire's money away. You really have to feel bad after a match like this for Triple H and Chris Jericho, who still have to go on after this. <laughs> and that's the thing. I, you know, I think if they'd have known and they should have known the reaction, at least the, they may not have known the reaction positive and negative. Or the people were going to switch Hogan full fledged baby face before it happened, but they should have known how it, it just because it's the WWF championship. You can't follow The Rock and Hulk Hogan in the Sky Dome in Toronto with anything. But there you have it. Any questions, Brian? Well, you give it five stars. Is that? I mean, you are the inventor, one of the co-inventors of the star rating system. Dave Meltzer obviously gets a lot of attention for it because he popularized it, but you did help invent it. You give this five stars. Well, as I've said before, the whole thing was based on Leonard Malton's movie review book and the way that me and my old friend Weasel Dooley looked at it when we were just doing this to ass off amongst ourselves and didn't expect anybody to ever take it seriously. 
one star was that was the shits two stars was that was about what we expected three stars was that was really good and four stars was they tore the fucking house down and there were those were the only parameters we didn't know about work rate and finish and fucking all that stuff and everything it was how did we and the people around us think about this exhibition of skill and then five stars came along when the best we'd ever seen was four stars and, and Lawler and Funk just fucking went crazy. But that was pretty much it. It would be hard to figure out how you would have a professional wrestling match that went any better than this, that had any bigger stars, that was built any better, that had a bigger crowd, or that was executed better. They tore the house down. Everything made sense. They did exactly what they should have done for business. You couldn't call the finish until you saw it. Because Pat was a genius with those things. Except for the actual work, which as we've mentioned, there were some points there where, no, you don't want to hurt Hulk Hogan in front of 80,000 fucking people. And if anybody else was doing it, somebody would go, eh, but still, what the fuck? Who else, who else today could have that fucking match flawlessly all the way through? And the one mistake we did find, Hogan, the old pro there, covered up fairly easily. I don't see how, if you're, if, what was a, what was wrong with this match? What was a drawback to it? What would, could anybody not have been thrilled with? About this match, it checked every single box that wrestling should check. It drew, it delivered, it tore the house down, and the it was a perfect match from start to finish. And if part of your criteria for judging a match is the reaction in the room as it's happening, nothing could beat this. No. If your criteria for a wrestling match is, well, nobody dove. They didn't do any dives or, you know, they, they were, they were observing the rules. Not You're enough near falls. Idiot. Not enough near falls. No, just ones that fucking nobody could tell the, you know, the outcome of, and it popped the people. You've got a bunch of fucking gymnastics fans out there that will find fault with anything where the guys are not diving around all over the place, but that's not professional wrestling. And that's, why we're in this state we're in because many of the wrestlers think it is, but, uh, you know, it, by any other method of judging this match, I don't see how it could have been any better. One last question about this. You're someone who in the past, when working with wrestling students, when training people uses old matches on tape to teach various things. Now that you've watched this match, if let's say you were teaching students right now about professional wrestling, would you utilize a match like this? Well, in actual fact, I utilized the previous year's WrestleMania match often because that was WrestleMania with Rock and Austin in Houston. I would cut it off before the finish where they turned Austin heel, uh, <laughs> before the afterbirth, rather, where you hugged Vince because that was the worst thing that ever happened to wrestling. But the same thing applies. This is working. I used Rock and Austin because I was there, watched it, loved the fucking match. And also, let's face it, you can't, nobody could replicate what Rock and Hogan just did there. You'd have to have the building and the history and be those two individual people. But a more pertinent point to Rock and Austin the previous year was these are two guys that one of them had five years previous had never been on national fucking television before and nobody knew who he was. And the other guy five years previously was an underneath guy in the other company that got fired over the phone, but they grossed $50 million in one night at the Houston Astrodome and neither one of them jumped off the top rope. So that's what I would show in class to teach that. But yes, if I ever did teach another class, which is highly unlikely uh, I would I would point out what I've pointed out about this Hogan and Rock match to everybody, to the, the class, because you don't see anybody capable of doing this shit anymore. Part of it is the bad booking that doesn't get anybody over. Part of it is that everybody knows now it's all bullshit. Nobody tries to convince anybody any different. 
those things make it impossible to get anybody over like The Rock or Hogan anymore. But if you did get them over like that, I don't know too many people could have had this fucking match under those circumstances and pulled it off. So, but yes, there's lessons to be learned there, but even if you could do it as an individual wrestler and replicate all these things, you can't do your own booking and everybody else's booking that leads up to your match. So you're at a handicap to begin with because nobody will ever get over that big again because nobody's going to be allowed not even be allowed. It's not possible for anybody to get over in professional wrestling ever again, like Hulk Hogan and or the rock because at least they got in when the majority of the fans still either believed or didn't know what the fuck was going on. So they were able to get over it. Nobody can get over that strongly with that many different people. Now, for one thing, that many different people are not ever going to watch wrestling again because they all know it's fake and phony and no effort is being made on the part of the companies, except for ring of honors. We talked about earlier to change that perception so therefore, we're narrow casting to a niche audience that appreciates the, the art form in some respect. But you can't have a star of the level of Hogan and Rock again because the people had to believe in those guys for them to get that big. And you can't, you're not allowed to believe in anybody in wrestling anymore. They will slap you in the face with it if you haven't picked up on it already that the whole thing's bullshit as soon as you watch the television program, they'll slap you in the face with it. So hide and watch. I don't know how much longer I'll be around, but I'll guarantee you that nobody in the sound of my voice that's currently alive will ever see a professional wrestler as over worldwide as mainstream with as many people as Hulk Hogan or the rock. It's not possible anymore because they've shit. They've shit the bed and they can't do that again. You can't, even if you could find those talents, they can't be booked to that level and the people will not accept them at that level because we have pretty much destroyed our business. <laughs>